what can you say that can get somebody to recognize, hey, I have a problem and I need to fix it. What words will you use to help them embrace change to improve their current situation by investing in you? Whether you're a small business person or a sales rep, it's your job to get their attention and earn a conversation. Now, given this situation, it's natural to wonder how can psychology be used to help us persuade better? But the problem is when asking this question of ourselves, we end up communicating in ways that makes us sound needy, sleazy, or both. And it's actually normal because when this happens, it's because you're the one who's interrupting the other person, you're the one who's seeking attention, and this means that you naturally have a lower status. However, there is a different way to communicate that avoids this. Here's the gist. So far, let's say you've been interrupting and persuading, but instead you can provoke and allow the other person to persuade themselves. And it starts with getting them a little bit curious. So here's how this technique works. It helps people stop and just think for a minute, wait, is this person worth talking to? It is that simple. So today I'm gonna to show you how to grab a potential customer's attention and cause them to think, hmm, Maybe I need to pay this person a little bit of attention. Let's dive in. Now, I don't blame you for believing that people need to be persuaded in order to listen to you because after all, your call or your email or your LinkedIn DM is interrupting their day and it's normal to think, hey, I need to look credible and I need to be clear about my value. Otherwise, why would somebody engage with me? Well, the problem is when you start positioning for credibility or start trying to prove your value, it does tend to make you look low status. You know, like you're trying too hard or you lack confidence. Confidence. So for example, when you reach out, you might mention your big impressive customers or industry awards that you've won, but this in their eyes tends to make you look desperate. Now, persuasive sales techniques also come across as not very relevant quite often, especially if you're casting a wide net. You see, that's the problem with the psychology of persuasion. Most techniques come across as either completely irrelevant because the customer isn't in buy mode yet, or it comes across as being low status. One of the biggest misconceptions about change is that it's about persuasion. It's not. It's about empowering others. In fact, the urge to persuade is a red flag. Bang on, Greg. I recently discovered Greg Satal, who says it perfectly. The urge to persuade means that you either have the wrong idea or you have the right idea, but you're telling it to the wrong people. Wait, that sounds really important. The urge to persuade is a red flag. In other words, you're either casting your net too wide or your idea or your solution is the right one, but you're not targeting it to the right people. You're communicating to people who don't want to listen right now, but they will be receptive in the future. Bottom line is you're gonna miss those people by trying to persuade them too early. And that is a real problem because you end up sending messages that introduce your solution to a majority of people who don't have the problem yet. And you may think that you're casting a wide net, but what you're actually doing is spamming. The people you wanna start out with are the people who are excited about change, who you can help be successful, who are gonna bring in others who can bring in others still. So don't worry about persuasion. Start with people who actually want the change to happen. Nailed it. Aim your message at the people who either want change to happen or are open to considering it. I call these high probability suspects. We suspect that they are more than likely to want to become provoked maybe not about your product or your service, but they are primed to engage in a issues-focused conversation. They want to do some homework before deciding on making change. So I want you to consider thinking more about this. Calling on the right people who fit specific selection criteria makes you relevant by default. You don't even have to try to be relevant. Now, if you're interested in getting started or finding these people, leave a comment down below and I'm gonna get you on the right track.
Once you're aiming at the right people who are likely to accept your interruption, you can start provoking them when you reach out. Provocation is a much stronger, higher status, higher confidence way to earn a conversation. Provocation might involve, for example, challenging the other person. Like in Challenger Selling, if you've read that book, yes. For example, asking a facilitative question like, hey, who benefits from not addressing and we name the issue when clearly nobody's going to benefit from not addressing the issue. Or you might ask the question, when do you intend on fixing this? Now you might be thinking, Molander, I am not comfortable asking questions like that. And that is because these questions are using confident tone. Now in the past, you've probably spoken from either beneath or above the other person. Speaking from equal status just feels completely different, both to you and to the customer. So. Depending on how long you've been speaking from a lower subservient status, it might take some time to get used to a more confident tone when you communicate. Or you may be too confident and you might be talking down to people. So for example, when reaching out for the first time, educating customers, this technique tends to speak down to the other person, just like a parent would speak to a child. And when you're calling on decision makers with a lot of authority, that is a really big problem because your education tends to come across as insulting or possibly condescending. You're talking down to them. Even worse, this persuasion tactic makes you look like you need the attention rather than wanting the attention. Wait, that sounds important. This persuasion tactic makes you look like you need the attention rather than wanting the attention. Now, I happen to think that provocation is super cool. However, I don't blame you if you're worried about sounding rude or arrogant, but be careful. Don't confuse rudeness with confident tone. Also, I don't want you to think that the examples that I'm sharing here in this video are appropriate for your specific situation. They're probably not. I'm just trying to demonstrate the idea and get you familiar with it. The idea is to earn engagement by provoking curiosity. So let's come back to my earlier example. When asking who benefits from not fixing this problem, here's why we're making this challenge. It's seeking responses like, well, nobody benefits, obviously. Why are you asking? Or they might reply, don't beat around the bush. What are you suggesting? That is what curiosity sounds like. Remember, you want the conversation, but you don't need the conversation. That is a super important distinction in terms of your tone. Now that you have this information, you can either continue to look like a needy salesperson or you can become a confident provocateur. So next time you're reaching out and you think, how can I appear credible to the other person? I want you to stop. That is a yeah. dirty thought. Instead, help the other person subconsciously wonder, hey, is this person speaking to me from my level? And you're gonna be able to do this because you're going to use non-persuasive words and tonality that matches their status to help them feel like someone of equal status is speaking to them when you make your approach. And don't forget that second piece, focus on calling only on the people who you know are more than likely to want to engage in a conversation, not a conversation about buying, a conversation about issues feeding into the possible sales opportunity. All right, you can do this. Seriously, I want you to be a little bit skeptical about conventional outreach strategies and sales psychology. If you need help, I'm going to be here for you. Now, if you're serious enough, you can literally get started with me in a free course and begin transforming how you think about sales psychology techniques and persuasion. I want you to see the link to my free Curiosity Crash Course in the description down below, or you can head over to curiositycrashcourse.com to get started right now. And please guys, if you took value from this video, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing for more tips on getting people curious. My name is Jeff Molander and I study how the most successful persuaders, well, they don't persuade at all. So if you're a little bit crazy and you're open to debunking popular yet shitty persuasion techniques, leave me a comment below, subscribe or get started in the crash course. All the best and see you next time.